Hello, this is Bern, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you five specific ways in which men need to evolve in dating and relationships with women, and what your role might be in this whole equation. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, or wasting time, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. This topic is dear to my heart, and you might notice that I'm in a different studio. I'm on my live YouTube studio versus my regular studio. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have a personal conversation with you that's going to take a little bit more time than my usual video. There's going to be slightly more nuance than the usual video, and it's going to require pacing. This is not a video to bash men. This is not a video to put men down. So if you came to this video in some ways hoping that I'm going to say, hey, men suck, then this is not the, the video for you. Just keep to my next one or go somewhere else. And if you're looking for someone who's going to share the truth the way I see it, at least, given that I'm a man, so I may have some blind spots being a man, <laughs> but at the same time, offer you some tools that you may not have right now that are going to help you be better in this dating game, they're going to help you waste less time and going to help you to create the type of connection that you want, then that's what I'm going for right now. Second thing, I am not re recording this video in any way as the example of what an evolved man is. I'm not writing this video saying, hey, I have achieved this pinnacle of, or this milestone of success, so let me pass down to the future generations how you should be. I'm recording this video as a flawed man who has experienced pain in his life, who has hurt people in the wake of believing and attempting my best to, to do the things that I do, who's done things in relationships that I'm not proud of. And as a result of that, and as a result of having the blessing of helping hundreds of women by this point in my life who have not had the relationship they want to finally get it, to create the type of connection they probably some of them didn't think was possible for them to actually create this lifelong commitment, I have learned a lot in terms of what's possible and what's true and also what needs to change. First of all, I'm a guy. I have two sons. I have two brothers. So I'm someone who believes in men. I'm someone who, who comes from perspective that men have something to offer, that the world is better with men than without men even though there's lots of problems and lots of crap that happens as a result of some men. I'm not blind, and I'm not claiming that guys are not part of the problem. As a I mean, as a result of that, I'm actually recording a video on the ways we men need to evolve in relationships and in dating. So the second reason that why I'm recording this video, and you might be asking yourself, well, your channel is for women. Why are you recording a video on how men need to evolve? Well, I recognize that my channel is for women. This is not an attempt for me to change the angle of my the, the clients who I serve. There's many channels who serve men. There's channels who talk to men. There's channels who help men. And some of them are pretty good. So my reason for recording this is to, beyond the fact that some guys might watch this, more women will watch this than men because that's the nature of my channel, so that you can be empowered to A, understand what to look for and what not to look for, so that you can stop wasting time in ways that you might not be uh, aware of right now. And third, so you can be part of the solution. Now, uh, I know that's a loaded statement because you might be thinking, well, guys should fix their own stuff. And I'm not saying that you should fix it for them. And I'm not saying that you're responsible for their behavior. What I'm saying is you're watching my videos because you want a relationship with a man. That's 99.99% .99 of people who watch my videos, whether it's uh, women who want men or gay men who want men, but that's the majority of my audience, right? People who want men in a relationship. So because that's something that you still want right now, my hope is that you can be part of the solution versus part of the problem. And part of the solution means understanding that if you show up in ways that are healthy and awesome, guys will naturally need to step up to the plate to be able to get a connection with you. And if they don't, you won't engage with them or waste your time with them. And if more women show up in ways that are like you're about to show up, then this will this change will happen more quickly than not. That is only one part of the solution. That's not the solution. The solution is not just for you to, by virtue of uh, saying no to guys who don't show up great, that's the solution, help them change. That's, but that's a part of the solution without which this is not going to change. 
So you're part of the solution in that specific point in the spectrum. Uh, last thing I want to share before I start my five specific ways in which men need to evolve is that if you want to go beyond the concept of this video, if you want to understand how you more quickly can attract the type of man that I'm talking about and that you've been searching for, then there's going to be a free training that I created for you. That's uh, if you go to the first link on the description of this video, you will see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching that free training right away. So first way in which men need to evolve in dating and relationships to serve the world better and to serve women better is to understand their own feelings. Now, this is, this, you're going to probably throw a tomato at me and say, well, this is, can you be more basic than that? Uh, I could, but this is why this is so important. One of the biggest complaints I hear from women is that they need men to communicate better. Well, guess what? You can't communicate that which you don't understand or feel. It's really, really hard. So the reason why I'm starting with something as basic as understanding your feelings is because most men don't understand their feelings. Most men don't have the capacity or training or guidance or understanding as to how they can safely feel something and then better yet express it in a way that makes sense. Uh, there's biological reasons for this. Something as basic as you as a woman have more connections between both hemispheres of your brain, which make it easier to understand feelings and have intuition. And then there's a socialization part of the whole thing. From a very early age, most men learn to be quiet and to take it and to suck it up and to not cry and to not be vulnerable and to not let their fear show because if they do, they might get bullied. They might get called names. They might get beaten up. So men have learned through many, many, many years, uh, and I'm talking thousands of years, to not express themselves and to shut things down. So when it comes down to connecting with a woman and expressing specific nuanced feelings, it's hard sometimes when you don't even understand your own feelings. So that's the first area of evolution that, that without which none of the other steps will be possible. The second area of evolution is going to be uh, man's capacity. Once you have that understanding, once you're more in touch with your feelings, to develop empathy and to have the intellectual and the empathetic understanding that women risk more in dating than men do. And, and here's why I want to say that. There's four specific areas. There's more. But I'm going to talk about four that I think will be very simple to understand for anyone, men or women watching this. The first one is the physical danger. Why? Because except from some few exceptions, and there are some exceptions, men are stronger physically than women and have more testosterone than women and are more of a danger in terms of physical potential harm to a woman than a woman to a man. But because men are more of a danger to women physically, then women risk more when they enter a relationship with a man. They risk physical harm if the guy is not evolved enough to figure out his own crap, right? So that's the first area. Second area is in the area of time. And uh, I say time because if you, and I'm not saying that you should, but if you do want a family, if you're a woman who wants a family, you have fewer years than a man to get your docs aligned so that you can actually get it in a natural way, in a way that doesn't require extensive in vitro fertilization or, or adoption or something of that nature. So guys have a lot longer to figure that out, which is unfortunately, biologically, perhaps one of the reasons why men take longer to mature because they have more time to figure out their stuff and you don't. So the blessing you get is that you get to become mature sooner and wiser sooner. The challenging piece is that some guys don't evolve as soon as you do. So you might have to to contend with that. So there's that, right? That the, the time factor in the risk equation, because if you connect with a guy and spend four years with him and he is not ready for a serious commitment and you've been investing on that commitment and banking on it, you have to start from scratch and your likelihood of becoming a mom just diminished in that moment unless something, again, you change the blueprint of what being a mom means. So there's that challenge. Then there's the risk of I'm going to call it separately, even though it's physical risk, there's the risk of pregnancy, right? Why pregnancy? Well, because, I mean, and now today, day and age, even stronger based on what's happening in this country. I'm not going to go into political details right now. And 
Suffice it to say that there is a greater risk because you can get pregnant and he can't. Just based on that, that's going to be a lifelong commitment to something that he might wash his hands off and not be for you there for you. So again, there's a higher risk for you on that realm. And then there's going to be a societal risk for you in relationship to connecting with them and expressing your needs and being intimate. Why? Because there is a double standard in this world, still to this day and age, still in this country, because I'm not talking uh, right now uh, in a Middle Eastern country, this is what's taking place. I'm talking in the U.S. it's taking place. There's a double standard in terms of what men will do in terms of being promiscuous and being considered, even though it's changing, it's not changing fast enough, right? When men are considered uh, conquerors and women are considered easy women, or worse, sluts, right? I don't agree with it, and it happens. So there's more risks, but those are four risks that make it more challenging or more risky for you as a woman to date and to go for a relationship than a man. So the area of evolution that I'm talking about right now is a guy's capacity to understand that the risk is higher on your part, and because of that, there needs to be an extra level of clarity and an extra level of expressiveness and an extra level of empathy to be able to say, here's what I'm going for, and you understand what, what that is so that you can make better decisions about if you want to invest your time or not invest your time with that guy. Uh, third area of evolution is delayed gratification, which goes hand in hand with the second area, which is risk. So I'm going progressive order because if you notice, like if you have the empathy to understand that the woman is risking more than you do in terms of dating, then you also understand that the need to delay gratification, meaning the, the need to delay having sex with her early on, is super important. Why? Because if you take longer as a man to create a connection with a woman before you have sex with her, that means that you'll either figure out if you're more compatible or not, if there's emotional connection or not, you might go through more experiences that make it less likely that you'll just connect with her and then leave or connect with her and then forget about her or connect with her and then lose interest, right? So the late gratification is an area that will not only help men in terms of connecting with women in dating and being uh, more empathetic and giving her a better chance to figure out the truth of who you are before she gets hooked emotionally or biochemically in something that's not good for her. But it's also going to allow the man to be a better man. Why? Because you need delayed gratification for anything that matters in life. Whether you want to start a business, whether you want to save for retirement, whether you want to be a parent, all the things that matter in life required delayed gratification, period, the end. So that's an area of evolution for men that's going to be quintessential in this progression of showing up for women and showing up for themselves, not just for women. Fourth area of evolution is clarity of purpose and intention versus ambiguity. So what do I mean by that? Uh, clarity of purpose is twofold. Clarity of purpose is understanding what you want to do with your life. That's area of evolution. And again, as I'm sharing these things with you, please make note of the types of guys you connect with, because I know that many of the guys that you connect with don't show up with some of these things, but some of them do. And some of them do, and they don't show up in the right package for you in that moment. Or they show up for you and you say, well, I don't feel anything for him and it's just been one date or less than one date. And because he's not showing up in the perfect package, you say, well, I would not lower my standards for that. And it might be that second, third, fourth date, that guy might feel incredibly viscerally strong to you in your heart, but you didn't give him a chance and you went for the f flashy object and the flashy object created pain and this guy would have been an amazing partner. Again, not saying that you should go for a guy that you feel no connection with uh, emotionally or sexually. I am saying that that sexual and emotional connection will take more times than what you've been trained by Disney movies and romance novels to, to believe, which is that when you meet the guy, your ocean of your heart will part and you shall know in that moment that that's your guy. That doesn't happen like that sometimes. And it's okay if it doesn't. It doesn't mean that it's gonna, that's not going to happen but you can give it more of a chance, even if it doesn't happen, that this reality doesn't happen really early on. Going back to clarity of purpose, clarity of purpose means that you know what you want to do in life and you also know what you want in dating and you know what you want in a relationship. And I talked about it a little bit in the previous point, but you, when you know what you want and you know where you're at and you know what you're capable of offering, then you can come clean and say, here's what I can offer. Here's what I can give. Does that work for you? Yes or no. Instead of being mysterious and quiet about it and not express it. Uh, next one, fifth 
uh, area of evolution in dating is going to be leading the pursuit. Leading the pursuit means that once you understand that you're interested in figuring out if you can create a connection with someone, that you take the steps of making it easier for her to know that you're serious about it, that you follow up with intention and clarity, that if you say, I'm going to meet you next week, that you call to meet her next week, that if you say, I'm going to show up at five, you show up at five, that you make it easier for her to show up and shine uh, instead of not knowing what's happening and, and, and feeling like there's a game playing and trying to be mysterious so that you get hooked. I mean, when you show up as a man, understanding and clear about what you want and you're clear in the pursuit, you're not chasing, you're not begging, you're simply being clear about your intentions, then if it's the right person, if she's the right one, she'll really enjoy the process and she will show up in ways that are enthusiastic and and good <laughs> for the relationship. So now, these are the specific five areas that I'm talking right now in terms of dating. There's more, obviously, but I'm talking about five. If those things changed, your experience of dating would be different now. Here's, I'm going to share with you a few things about what you can do about this and what's your role in this process right now. I want you to go for better dates versus more dates. So what does that mean? That means that if you're clear about what you want, if you're setting right boundaries, I'm going to talk more about that in a second, that I'd rather you go on a date with the one guy who actually wants to talk to you on video before you go on the date to reduce the risk for you and not go on the date with five guys who just think that's too much to ask. So you go on one date that's better quality than six dates that where the guy can't reduce your risk because he's just all into himself, Right. So what does that mean? That means that five guys who could have connected with an amazing woman who is you won't get a chance to connect with you, which means if more women show up that way, they're going to quicker than not start changing their tune and being more empathetic to what you have. But regardless of whether they do or not, you still get to connect to that one guy who wants to do things right, right? When I saw a billboard the other day that it's going to make so much sense and I want you to really put this in your head. Uh, I was driving the other day and I saw a billboard uh, on the 4th, 4th of July. It's a cop stopping somebody at night who was speeding. And basically the headline was, speeding slows you down. Why? Because you think you might get, get to the place faster. But if a cop stops you and now you're basically arriving 20 minutes later to that place, plus now you have to go to court and now you have to pay money. I, so it slows you down in life, right? So speeding slows you down. What does that mean? That means that connecting with guys sexually sooner than you need to slows you down. Why? Because if it doesn't work out, then you're starting from scratch again, but with slightly less uh, enthusiasm, with a lower self sense of self-worth, with less confidence, with a belief that things are tougher than they need to be. Speeding slows you down means that if you become exclusive with someone before you should, it slows you down because you, you have to start again from scratch with someone who might be a better fit for you. If you project heavily what that guy is and based on your hunch and the way you feel attracted about him versus the way he's showing up, then it slows you down. Why? Because you stop paying attention to other guys who might be far better than him for you. But because you went for just the shiny object, then you didn't allow them to show up in your life. You shut them down. You didn't give them a chance. And now at the end of this equation, this guy was not good for you. You projected a bunch of stuff into him and now you're heartbroken and hurt. Intimacy without depth is unsustainable. Intimacy without depth means that getting a guy, get, getting strong feelings for someone early on is not bad, but not evaluating those feelings, not pacing yourself as you develop those feelings is probably going to hurt you more than not. Now, here's three, four things you can do to help men evolve more quickly, but beyond helping men evolve more quickly, to help yourself attract the right guy more quickly. So think about it that way. You're not doing it for men, you're doing it for yourself, but in the process of doing it for yourself, you happen to help men, then that's a win-win <laughs> in my book. The first one is when your knees get weak, uh, stop projecting. When you connect with someone and you feel really viscerally strong, you feel attracted to him in a, in a strong way, pace yourself. And number two, be very clear about what you're looking for and be expressive about what you're looking for early on. Why? Because imagine that you want to play tennis and a guy shows up with a hockey stick. Very unlikely he's going to be able to play tennis. But if you, in your meta in this metaphor, don't ask him why the hockey stick instead of a tennis racket and you go along hoping that the 
hockey stick turns it into a tennis racket, then you're hurting yourself. So that means that if early in the process, you don't take the time to ask men what they're looking for, if you don't express what you're looking for, and you simply connect with the guys out of fear of them disappearing, out of them not continuing to show up or thinking that you're needy, you don't ask the questions, you don't express what you're looking for, then you're gonna waste your time. Set healthy boundaries early and often. When I say healthy boundaries, a boundary can be something that allows a guy to show up differently for you, or a guy allows a guy to stop showing up for you completely. It can also be something that shuts down a guy before he gets a chance. So it's kind of like the metaphor, don't shoot a cannon at a rabbit because you kill the rabbit, but you destroy him completely. There's like, there's, <laughs> you know, there's like nothing left. So when a guy shows up, and again, there's context, right? Some situations will call for completely never seeing him again, shutting things down, moving away, running away even. But some situations are opportunities for you to invite the guy to show up. So healthy boundary means the guy starts inferring sexual innuendos early on instead of saying, you know what? I'm never going to connect with you again. You're the wrong type for me. Then saying, dude, like I, I appreciate your excitement and I don't connect with guys sexually early on. This might be something amazing later down the road if we're ever in a relationship, not just not this early. What does that do? If the guy wants to play his cards right, even though he made a mistake, he can show up stronger for you. He can stop the sexual innuendos and start showing up with more emotion. If the guy just wants that, he's going to not be able to do it and he will step down or you will ask him to step down. But you have at least a shot of having some guys show up differently through stating a boundary that is not completely saying you're wrong for it, just saying, I don't want that. I'm, I want different. I want more. I want better. Can you do better for me? That's the invitation, okay? And the last one is meet more men. When you're doing things the way I'm sharing with you right now, if you meet more men, you will have a chance to get your result faster. And what I mean by that is I don't want you to meet more men and go on more dates that are not healthy for you, but if you're in general going to more places, in general engaging with more men, in general having more opportunities, then it's going to take less time for you to create the type of connection you want. Hope this big conversation is helpful and insightful to you in some way. I know it's different than my usual video. I know it took a little longer for me to express these things. I think they need to be said. I think the typical short format doesn't allow me to say things quite the same way. And again, if this is not your cup of tea, I understand this is not what I create every week, but I hope this is helpful to you. I hope this conversation gets you to start thinking about this, not in black and white terms, but in great terms that allow you, regardless of what's happening in life, show up differently, go for more, set boundaries and get what you want. Thank you. And uh, if you like this video and you want to go further, as I shared early on, go to the first link in the description of this video where I'll, I'll, uh, you can take my free training. And uh, if you like this video, click like or thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, be notified of new episodes as they come out. If you want my hand holding and help to attract the relationship you want in a fraction of the time, like I've done for hundreds of women around the world, then second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.